Good morning, folks. We're going over what's got our attention on the sun here. We'll hit an excellent paper on solar forcing of clouds and another on the heat of 2023 and what caused it. But let's start with the last 24 hours on our star where we find that most of the day was quieter after the spate of flares from the southern groups, including the X-Class event we saw yesterday, Corona Hole on the north, and just this morning in the last few hours, the flaring piped up again at the departing limb. Big sunspots heading out of view, shot off an M2 flare and small CME, that one is aimed about 90 degrees away from the Earth. When those depart over to the right, we'll still have a ton of active regions, but most will be smaller and less complex. We'll keep monitoring their development here this week, while also monitoring the solar wind in about two to three days because of that northern coronal hole. The last coronal hole stream was very weak and did not produce a geomagnetic storm. This one is bigger, stronger, but is further north and may have its stream miss our planet. We'll see. First up in the articles is this. Hope in the youth after all. Good master's thesis on solar forcing of polar stratospheric clouds. The link you have is mostly in another language, but you can get the PDF download in English. Very thorough, very on point with the dozens of studies we've shown before on how impactful solar electromagnetic particle forcing is on the clouds, especially at the polar region. We also have a fantastic paper here where a team from Miami and Princeton universities have said that the El Nino we had last year is to blame for any record heat that's being discussed and there is no need or reason to blame human emissions. While that's a big story in the climate realm itself, I'll ask all of you to remember that of all the vectors of solar forcing that have been discovered, the most studied, most confirmed, is the sun's impact on El Nino, and in fact it's pretty much the only piece of it the IPCC and official climate world acknowledges. I think that's something called transitive properties I'm hoping you'll consider there. Folks, either later tonight or tomorrow, our next issue of Observer Review will come out. I have some very important science the last month here, and as always, this is the number one way to keep up or be reminded about not only the best science of the last month, but why it matters, the perspective. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.